Welcome back to the Peerless YouTube. I am Katie North and today we're going to be painting Valentine's Day cards or any day cards. Uh, I just moved, recently moved to Texas so I've been loving the cowgirl inspiration and I first saw this design on Pinterest and it was of a regular Queen of Hearts but I love the idea of layering the different colors of pink and oranges and kind of getting um, all of those tonal values but all within that same warm color range. So we have a couple of different things to pick from. If you would like to do a bigger painting and then maybe like size it down and get printed as Valentine's Day cards or cards, you could do the double, which is inverted on this side, on both sides. And that's more like the traditional card look. Or you could do the straight up and down one way version, which for watercolors, I wanted to make this one into an actual card just on watercolor paper. So you can give it to anybody you'd like that way. Um, so that is your choice. So today we're going to be using only four colors. Uh, the Jackalopement Red, Royal Crimson, Blonde Hair, and then Azureline. I don't know how to say that, but Azureline Red, which is like almost like a really pretty hot pink. Uh, and then the Gold Accents, which is by far my favorite paint in all of Peerless because it's so shiny and it just makes it look like extra special and sparkly so who doesn't love sparkles so it's pretty easy you could be able to do this with kids too um and of course my little sense of humor because coming to the south and my husband being from nashville uh i love the saying bless your heart because it can mean so many different things so depending on who you're giving it to it could be a uh a little, a little joke, or it could be something sweet and endearing to you. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start with our prep work. So we have a nine by 12 watercolor paper that I'm going to make marks down the center of it to know where I am going to be placing my design on the right hand side and then also to where I'm going to be folding the paper in half to make it into a card. Um, the design that I have, I found a lovely picture of a cowgirl somewhere online <laughs> and I brought that picture into my Procreate program on my iPad and just did the outline and then also found a template of the Queen of Hearts just blank card. Um, so you are able to do this with a simpler version if you just go on Google or any other kind of internet search engine and look up a like drawing of um, a Queen of Hearts or a Queen of Hearts template. If you wanna do this for kids and have it be a little bit more simple, or if you would like to use this design too, it'll be available online. So once you have your design picked out, we're going to put it on our light box and then transfer it through using a pencil. If you want more of a lighter, kind of softer design or for a more illustrated look, we're gonna use these artist pens that are black and when the watercolor goes over, they will not smudge or move and you will still have those sharp crisp edges. So feel free to pause the video here and get your tracing done. And when you are finished, just hit play again and we will start with the first layer of paint. So for our first layer, we are doing the blonde hair and the azurine, I don't, still don't know how to say it, <laughs> uh, red. So I'm gonna make a puddle of a little bit more of a concentrated, just so I don't have to mix it again. Um, on my paint palette. So I'm adding the yellow first and then I will be adding a little bit of the red and then testing it out on my swatch. And so we want to make sure that it's a little bit more of a peachy color. And when you're painting, you're gonna be water watering it down as you go. And you can add water as you're going if you want a little bit softer. I like the kind of um, transition changes with kind of the watercolor on the page and I wanted to be able to see some of the brush strokes. But if you would like a more solid color without any variation, you can also spray the page with a little bit of water or wet it, wet it down with clean water first and then start adding your paint and you'll get a smoother surface also. And once you have all of your paint down and you're happy with it, um, for drawing time purposes, where I'm going to use my paper towel and dab all of the areas, um, just giving it a little bit more of that variation, but also in those areas of her face and her hands, I wanna make sure that they're not too peachy. 
and you'll be able to work a little bit faster on the next layer. For the second layer, we are using the Azrilo Red by itself without mixing any of the blonde hair in it. So it's a little bit more of just a pinky tone and again, making a puddle so I don't have to remix it with water to get the varied shades. Uh, and then we're going to start painting the outside border. You can also dab with this layer the paper towel to make it dry a little bit faster or if you want to make sure that it stays a little bit brighter um, go ahead and pause the video again and let that layer dry before you move on to the next. Alright, so we've made it to the third layer. The third layer is going to be the Jackalope Mint Red, and for this one, I'm going to switch to my water brush, just because it's a little bit finer and a little bit more detailed, and I can control the amount of water that goes into it. And instead of my palette, I'm going to be working with straight from my peerless sheet and then wiping off a little extra on my kind of swatch area. So for this one, you're going to fill up all of the areas. Um, of her jacket, the saddle, her hat, and the hearts, pretty much everything, and besides her hair and her skin tone. So watercolor by nature is transparent depending on the amount of water that you add. So this is going to act as a base layer for the red. So a lot of times watercolors, not always peerless because peerless is like extremely vibrant and is also why it makes it so amazing and so fun to work with because it's just those like super poppy tones. Um, but you know, if you were to put a red over white paper and watercolors, it's more like most likely gonna turn out to be a little bit more of a muted red or a softer and you're gonna have to add a couple layers to get that giant pop of color sometimes. So with this, we're using all of this, pink, the pink basically, as a base layer for the red, which is why it doesn't matter that we're going between the two tones and like I'm not like separating which is the pink one, which is the red. I'm just doing everything as the pink. And then the next layer, you'll see when I start adding the red, it's really gonna be like vibrant and dark and like very saturated. Um, so once you are done filling up all this, we are gonna have another little waiting drying time, which is very important, probably more important for this layer than the rest of them just because um, you want all of those red areas to be very sharp and crisp. And if you didn't let it dry all the way, you will get some kind of bleed out and some of that red will mix with the pink and you won't get those, um, you know, difference of tones as sharp. All right, so I know I said I was gonna do the red next, but now looking at the video again, we're gonna backtrack uh, just a little bit and we're going to do the skin tone. So that same peachy color that we did for our first layer, we are going to use the same thing, but which is a little bit more orange than pink and very diluted in water, so very light. And since you already have that base underneath of the peach already, we're just gonna do barely, barely a little bit more on her hands and her face, just to have a little bit of a contrast between the background and her skin tone. And next, we are going to be mixing the hair color and I decided on a coppery red hair color. You can do whatever you'd like, but I like it. I think it complements the pink tones and keeping in that warm spectrum of color. And we're going to use the blonde hair 
and then some of the azrael red and it's gonna make a very fiery, bright pigmented red. So, and then you're just gonna fill up all of the hair on the back and then a little bit um, that's kind of poking through over her shoulder, like her the shoulder behind. So once you fill up all of the hair, this will be a good time to pause the video and make sure that you have every section that you're going to be doing the red near or around is completely dry. And when you come back, we will do the red. We've made it. Hopefully you have been patient and you've let it dry. So there will be no smudging or bleeding into your pink tones. And for this, we are going to be doing mostly the Royal Crimson. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of that um, gold hair kind of color just to kind of give it more of an orangey red. It's not gonna do a ton, but as you can see, while I'm filling it in and I have those base layers of pink underneath, it turns out so pretty and so bright, or dark, I guess I should say, because it's nice kind of blood red almost. <laughs> so with that color, we are going to be doing our details. So the saddle, um, the fringe on it, and then the fringe on her jacket, and all of the hearts and her hat. So you just wanna take your time with this layer and make sure that you kind of have a little bit more control of your brush. And especially when you're working on the fringe, if you leave some of those uh, openings still, <laughs> you'll get the pink showing through um, that kind of shows more of the definition of the fringe between the red and the pink too. So just take your time. And when we come back, I believe we are going to be doing the gold. So I hope you enjoy this layer because I do. And I feel like it really starts coming together. And I wanted to say as well, if you're using your own design, just being able to pick out any of those finer details um, with this blood red kind of tone just really makes it all start to pop and come together. So don't have to use this one. Um, but yeah, anyway, I will check back in a minute. Right. So once you finished with all of your red details, we are going to be doing the gold and you should let it wait, you know, a little bit to dry, but since you're going over the red or like specific areas in gold, you're not worried about that bleed out as much. So you're able to kind of continue right onto the gold um, without too much drying time, just as long as it's not like an actual puddle. And with the gold, I'm going to mix a little bit of a puddle on my palette uh, just because I want to make sure it's a very concentrated amount of the gold and I don't have to keep adding water to it. And if I need it to be like extra gold, I can use my little puddle of gold straight to the peerless sheet and it'll be even more shiny and bright. So whatever little areas you want to pop out, like the rim of her hat, I go on every single little fringe. And so when you kind of shift the card to the light, the, sh the fringe really pops out with that gold and over the red, I feel like it's so pretty. And then after that is done, I am going to outline all of the borders in the gold as well. So oh, I just love it so much. All right, so once you do those inner border lines and make sure all of your little details are done, it is very helpful if you have taped down your painting um, to do the edges of it. You can use a little bit big of a bigger brush or your water brush. And if you paint kind of like alongside the tape and cover part of it, when you remove your tape, you'll have a nice crisp kind of golden border too. So that was also, I wanted to point out that it helps quite a bit to have that tape around to make sharper edges. All right, we made it. And now for the big reveal, it's always so fun when you get to see the tape removing and you see all those nice edges. Uh, just a little tape, like a little tip on removing the tape. Go slowly and kind of peel away from your painting 
and they'll kind of help you for not get any uh, rips in your paper or compromise the paper at all too. So once you have removed all of the tape, then you're going to fold down that center line and you have your completed Valentine's Day card. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I did and I think she's so cute. And if you do another design, I would absolutely love to see what you created using these tonal with the pinks and the oranges and the, you know, oh, I just love it. I love it so much and I would love to see your paintings. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you do this tutorial, make sure to tag us. We would love to see your paintings. See you next time.